for the last several years, particularly last year, the Warriors have been atrocious when Steph Curry's off the floor. You know that. And so now Chris Paul will man that second unit. And Chris, you know, that second unit should be fine now. They shouldn't be giving up the leads like they used to or letting the deficit expand. I think Chris shores up the second unit. That's the only basketball reason I see this fitting. But Chris is seems Ephraim not to be under the impression that he's a second unit guy. He hasn't ever come off the bench one day at least since college, and maybe even since, I, I, I don't know about, I assume he started as a freshman at Wake Forest, but he certainly never has in the NBA. And he sounds like he doesn't plan on coming off the bench this season. Here he is when he, at Summer League when he was asked about it. Everybody don't have the answers right now. Um, we'll practice. I'm sure there's going to be some things that I got to learn, things that they got to learn about me, but That's the case with any team. You know what he's got to learn? How to stay warm (laughs) while you sitting on the bench for the first seven minutes of the game. I mean, real talk, I don't mean it it to sound mean, but Ephraim, how's he going to start? People have thrown out the possibility of Chris Paul, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, and Draymond Green. What? No. So when when the reporters, I think yesterday or the day before yesterday, were asking yeah. him how is it going to feel with him coming off the bench, and his first response wasn't, look, if that's what the team right. needs me to do, then that's what I'm going to do. I'm here to help. Golden State win another championship. What he said was, did you talk to the coaches? <laughs> or are you the coach? Or are you the coach? <laughs> then young lady on the other side asked him the same thing. You've been the start of your whole career. How are you going to feel? Again, I, we haven't talked about that. I didn't – when they when Steve Kerr called me, I didn't say, uh, hey, coach, am, am I coming off the bench or am I start? So you already know what's about to happen. Chris Paul is still the same Chris Paul that's alienated teammates before, Mm. that's rubbed coaches the wrong way before, has a lot of pride in his abilities, maybe feels like he's been underrated his entire career. He is a Hall of Fame point guard. Oh, yeah. So when you talk to Hall of Fame caliber players – about them finally being reduced to bench players, it doesn't go well. We've seen plenty of examples of that. So you got some. I, I remember what Carmelo said. Remember what AI City? said. Yo, P. They Yo, think P. they think they I'm coming off the bench. Off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> A couple months later, he was out the league for two years. <laughs> And you're right, right AI could have played five more years. Five more years. Could have been a Jamal Crawford off the bench. You, you only get humbled when you're out of the league looking in, saying, man, I'll come back in at any at any capacity. Yep. Yep. That's going to be a problem in a locker room with a Draymond Green. You think, huh? You don't think and- Chris is gonna I don't want to say play nice, but you you really you so you you don't let me ask you this, because you obviously are an ex-professional athlete. I think he will try, even if he tries, right, he accepts, okay, I'm the sixth man, whatever. Is it fair to say, and you again, you know this, his body language just ain't going to be good. Oh, even no. if he's saying no. the right <laughs> things and end up doing the right things, right, it's just going to be natural. His body language is going to be bad. When I when I talk about things like that, I'm including I'm including body language, demeanor, uh, timeout, uh, huddle presence, discord, 
all of those, locker room, practices. It's hard because once you're not in a starting lineup, you feel like you've lost some of your superpower, especially when you're used to being a team leader. Chris Paul's not the team leader. Right. He's not coming here to be a team leader. Has he been on any team where he wasn't the team leader? Houston. And that was the problem with him but and they, James But they Harden. were a good team, though. Until they weren't. Chris should have been the leader. You're right. Right. But James Harden, Harden wasn't going give, for that. Right, right, he was right. like, no, what happened to that? It blew up. Right. Because really, you, if you remember quickly, they had got two years they had come close. And Chris was, it, the, the, the it was like, okay, we tried it your way. I stood on the side, let you dribble, 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 shoot, do it your thing. And we got close, but we didn't get over the hump. So let's try it a different way. That's when Harden wanted him out. No, you can go. And and <laughs> that, Chris still has the same energy. He still has the same pride. Yeah. What we saw last year for, in, 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 in Phoenix from Chris is the output just wasn't there. And look, in fairness to him, he still was a good point. He averaged 14 yes. and 9. He was fifth in the league in assists. Hey, it's Chris and Paul. Was play- and remember, they were down 0-1 when he got hurt in the playoffs in game two Again, against Denver. Go ahead. But lead right. That's a that's a whole nother issue. Again, go ahead. But leading <laughs> Denver in Denver in game two. So I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, it would have been different because Chris had his shot. He had his shot when everybody was crowning him, right? In 2021 against Milwaukee, they up 2-0. And so I, I'm not going to say, oh, they would have won it last year. I'm just saying they were they had a chance maybe to win game two and who knows what would have happened. But. I don't see how this gets them better. If you're looking for Chris Paul to man that second unit, Let's say he's all in on that. Can he, for 82 games or 60 games, be able to play at that high of a level, the pace that they play at with that second unit, those young guys? Well, the young guys, right. Right? They're going to want to get up and down. They're going to want to go. Chris is not at that level in terms of speed anymore. We just watched it play out. If you watch the Phoenix Suns, Devin Booker was down the court before Chris right. Paul got across half court. And Chris is always like to, you know, even when he was younger. He's a true point guard. He's going. Right. Like to control that half, that play in that half court game. I just don't see personally as a basketball fan and someone who's watched and covered the basketball a long time, I don't see the fit attitude wise, scheme wise. Now, Chris could just completely surprise everybody except whatever role they have for him. I don't right. know if he's there yet because he didn't have a terrible year last year during the regular season. All right. All right. right? So are you going to say, oh, we want me to come off the bench, but I'm still this guy. I'm still, you, you know. You know what else, Ephraim? And, and, and let, me, let me first give Chris a little advice. and Because I get it. I mean, that ego, and you know this as well as anybody. That ego was necessary for a little, little six man, foot, yes. right, little six foot guy to become one of the greatest players ever. So I'm not mad at him for that. I'm sure you aren't either. But I think it would serve him well and, and enable his ego to handle it if he really just looks at it and says, you know what? I'm 38. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas wasn't even had been out the league five years by the time he was 38. If not a few more, one or two more, maybe Whatever, about five, six years, you know, magic wasn't playing at 38. So if he looks at it that way and says, I get it, I'm 38. Let me staff and the rest of the guys are younger. Let me come off the bench, be, be, give the leadership the way, how I can not step on their toes, but be the leader I can be and take care of this second unit and let's go try to win a ring. That's the way he can do it. But here's the – I'm a kind of I'm not contradicting, but I'm just going to show the other side, Ephraim. This is one reason that might be tough. 
Because if he wins this ring, let's say Golden State wins it, and Chris just is the sixth man, plays well, but, you know, he's a sixth man. This is not a legacy-changing ring. You know what I'm saying? Like if he, I know exactly if he what went you're saying. Phoenix, if he went somewhere else where he's the starting point guard, oh, he's not scoring as much, but he's still the leading assist guy, and, you know, he's getting eight, nine assists. Then it's a legacy changing ring. When Gary Payton won his ring in Miami, I was just going to bring it up. Right? Just going to bring it up. Even Jason Kidd, who started in Dallas when they beat Miami, I mean, that was a good ring for Kidd and all. He got his ring. But you know what I mean? It's not like we say, oh, he led a team to a ring. Like if he had, he won it in New Jersey. And so that's the thing, too. Chris will get a ring should they win it. But it won't be like, you know what I mean? Like for a superstar, like I think, I think this was this quote was attributed to Michael Jordan. I'm a, I'm assume he said it. But he said the, the quote that was attributed to him at least. I always wanted to win, but I wanted to be the reason we won. Mm. Right? And I think that's how superstars feel. Well, I'm not mad at to, them. You have to think right. like that. In order to become a great, you have to think like that. Yep. It's hard to not think like that, and therein lies the problem. Right. I mean, the, the, my thing with Golden State, and look, I, it'll be interesting, Ephraim, because a big question will be how do they, like, has gotten Jordan Poole or getting Jordan Poole out of that locker room? Is Are we going to see, like, a huge difference? And I know I'm not saying everybody was against him because Steph, I think, gave a heartfelt message he didn't have to give. On Instagram, you know, so I, I'm not saying they all didn't like it, but the bottom line is it was tension and that controversy is now out of them, out of there. Will that lead them to play much better? If not, then I think they made a mistake by not getting more size. I know they got Dario Sarge, who I think could be good there, but they still, I think, needed more size. And like you said, Chris, I mean, I'm trying to look at it positive. But it I, I, it doesn't make a ton of sense. You know what they might do is trade him over the, you know, he could be trade back. I, what I said was I don't believe Chris, when that trade happened, I was on the show and I said I don't believe Chris will even play for the Warriors. Mm. Could happen. Could happen, no doubt about it.